standing for our national anthem, sung by Savannah McElhaney. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the Perilous fights are the ramparts we watched, or so gallantly streaming. Good evening, fellow graduates, family, friends, administrators, ladies and gentlemen of the school board, and members of the community. I am Emily Eckerd, and it has been my privilege to serve as treasurer for the last three years. As my final duty, I welcome all of you to the graduation for the Greater Latrobe Senior High School Class of 2014. <laughs> Seated here tonight are classmates who met in kindergarten, became playground buddies in the elementary school, and later shared the same lunch group table in the junior high when new faces were added to the mix. Here in the high school, where we were lucky if we were still close with our kindergarten friends, we also met new friends and have since shared many special memories. We are happy to have all of you here tonight as we create one last precious memory because you have all played a part in getting us to this moment. So welcome and we invite you to share in tonight's celebration. At a class officer meeting earlier this year, we began talking about plans for graduation. And one of the first ideas that came up was to get a graduation speaker for this year's commencement ceremony. The very first person that came to my mind was Mr. Carlos Cardoso. I first met Mr. Cardoso a few years ago during Kenna Metal's annual family picnic. I've been to several picnics, and anyone that has been there knows that the most popular attraction is the dunking booth. Mr. Cardoso's executive management team members volunteer for time slots to sit on the dunking perch as fellow employees and family members watch or participate. By making a charitable contribution, you have the opportunity to buy and throw balls at the target to dunk Carlos's team. Although that year my dad was on travel in India, my mom and I went to the picnic, and I went on to dunk all of Carlos's leadership team. Many of those dunks were financed by fellow Kenna Metal employees hiring me to take their throws. <laughs> Everyone had a great time, but no one seemed to enjoy the event any more than Mr. Cardoso. Having met and talked with this leader several times, and while participating in Kenna Metal's Young Engineers program, I felt he'd be an excellent choice for us tonight as we transition to the next phase of our lives. Mr. Carlos Cardoso is the Chairman, President, and CEO of Kenna Metal Incorporated, headquartered right here in Latrobe, PA, since its founding in 1938. Kenna Metal has grown their annual sales to nearly $3 billion and has grown to approximately 14,000 employees worldwide, including more than 1,200 in our region alone. 
Before joining Kenna Metal in 2003, Mr. Cardoso held executive positions at a number of well-known companies, FlowServe, Honeywell Allied Signal, and Cole Manufacturing, to name a few. He worked his way up from the shop floor and progressed to become an entrepreneur running his own machine shop. In March of 2013, Mr. Cardoso was named to the U.S. Manufacturing Council, where he chairs the subcommittee, Manufacturing Perceptions and Workforce Development. He and council members advised the U.S. Secretary of Commerce and the administration on matters relating to global competitiveness, policies, and programs essential to a strong U.S. manufacturing sector. He also serves as chairman of the Manufacturers Alliance for Productivity and Innovation, on the board of the National Association of Manufacturers, the board of the Allegheny Conference, the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute Council, and his alma mater, the Fairfield University Board of Trustees. Named one of America's best chief executive officers by Institutional Investor Magazine, Mr. Cardoso holds a bachelor degree from Fairfield University in Connecticut and a master's degree in management from the Hartford Graduate Center at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. He's here to share his journey to success after coming to the United States on his own at the age of 17. Please join me in welcoming our 2014 keynote speaker, Mr. Carlos Cardoso. Greetings and congratulations to the graduating class of 2014. What an exciting time of your lives. I'm humbled and honored to share this day with you because you reflect a bright future, not only for our community, but for our country. I see your faces looking back at me today and I vividly recall being your age. Looking forward all the opportunities life held. America has long been guided by a view that we can grow up to be whatever we want and to be everything that we want to be and achieve whatever goals we seek. I still believe those ideas to be true. Without them, innovation would be impossible. Without them, the idea of me standing here today would be unlikely at best. Some of you may know that more than 75 years ago, 1938, Kenna Metal was founded by a young engineer named Philip McKenna. He developed a groundbreaking innovation that was vital to the industry then and today supports a multi-billion dollar company a little over three billion dollars. Think about that. One innovated, started something that now supports the livelihoods of 14,000 employees and their families, serving 80,000 customers around the globe, backed by 100,000 suppliers, many of which are small business right here in this community. And because Kenna Metal is a public company, our owners hold 80 million shares of our stock, and I assume that most of you are own, especially if you have a 401k. So when you add it all up, we support literally millions of people, all thanks to one leader. We need more innovators like that now, and I marvel to think of the potential you represent here today. Who among you may be the next great leader? This is an important question, perhaps more than you realize, because it's just not about one company. It's about sustaining the American dream, the same dream that made this the greatest nation. You may be surprised to hear me say that, since my family is from Portugal, and I was born and raised in Africa. I came to this country on my own when I was 17 years old. I received a soccer scholarship and attended Fairfield University. And the biggest challenge for me is that I couldn't speak a word of English. What I did have remains with me today. Firm foundational values instilled by my parents integrity, determination, faith, and a very strong work ethic which my father exemplified. Those values 
and the support of many mentors provided solid ground for me to build a career in manufacturing. My experience mirrors that of many in this country. Manufacturing fueled an American dream that provided economic strength and personal opportunities for the entire nation, while demonstrating that possibility for many more around the world. From Europe to Asia to Latin America, there are young people like you who would give anything for our way of life. You know why? Because the American dream is about self-sufficiency, fueled by ingenuity and an individual revolution that provides stability for a nation's middle class. The American dream enables the real price of freedom. That is freedom to be who you are, to live your life fullest, to the fullest potential. Now, more than ever, we need to rise to this great responsibility. Because you, ladies and gentlemen, are stewards of the American dream. It is yours to cultivate in the spirit of your class model that quotes William Jennings Bryan, destiny is no matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. I'm not qualified to tell you what choices to make, but I can share some perspective from my own experience that you may find helpful to size the opportunities before you. First of all, I encourage you to apply your personal interests and capabilities to your educational and working pursuits. Find a way to pursue your passion. Whatever path you take, be mindful of how you can make a positive difference throughout the journey. If you take time to connect your potential to a higher purpose along the way, you will likely find the truest determination, the one that brings you and others the greatest fulfillment. After all, the real measure of success you achieve is not appraised in fortune or fame. True success comes with discovery and fulfillment of your own potential to make a difference in this world. A career in manufacture, manufacturing made it possible for me to live the American dream. It provided a path of lifelong learning and a great livelihood for my family. I want to assure you that opportunities to achieve your dreams and carve your own path are very real. In fact, the biggest problem for my company and many others in manufacturers is not a lack of jobs, but rather a lack of talented people with the technical skills we need. Perhaps you may not realize that manufacturing today is high-tech industry. Perhaps you may not may rather work for an information technology company like Apple or Amazon or other sexy companies, yet someone has to make the products that those companies sell. That's what innovators like Kenna Metal do as part of a real economy industry that contributes to the highest returns to our nation and spends the most on innovation. In fact, for every one dollar we invest in manufacturing, we generate an additional $1.48 into the economy. We pay better than most industries as well. And I can promise you, it is absolutely fun making real things that are essential to everyday life. It is rewarding to work in an industry that enables progress and a better quality of life for people all over the world. That's how I connect my company's higher purpose. With a sense of purpose and a willingness 
to keep learning, you also can advance to a leadership position. This affords an even greater privilege to develop another generation of talent. That is why I'm here today, because you deserve the best past possible preparation to win the opportunities ahead. It is also why we invest time and volunteer in our communities and schools as in our Young Engineers program pioneered in, with your school teachers and administrators right here in Latrobe High School. We realize we had to overcome some negative, inaccurate perceptions about manufacturing. So you could learn firsthand how it really is. High tech, a highly innovative. Since we established that program, we have extended to Solon, Ohio. In fact, some of our recent graduates have returned to Canamero work as interns this summer. Between both schools, we have made a difference with 115, 150 students and families, while changing perceptions about manufacturing life's journey. So I urge you, make your steps across this stage today with purpose. And when you accept this diploma, know that it represents the greater future we are entrusting to your hands. Accept this great responsibility with the resolve to live and work to a higher purpose. Holding true to the values that keep Americans strong. And with every step you take from that moment, focus forward on the journey in front of you. To help you remember that, consider why Enzo Ferrari designed the first race car with no rear view mirrors. When asked about it, he said, because what's behind you doesn't matter. As you plot your course forward, my parting wish to the class of 2014 is a quote that I hold each day literally because it's my coffee mug in my office. From Norman Vincent Peale, who wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, it says, shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Congratulations, class of 2014, thank you. On this year's National Honor Society trip to Chicago, I was roommates with Danielle Charbonneau and Becca Brubaker. We were all taking AP Literature and Composition, which meant we all had the same heavy load of homework to complete during the trip. Becca and Danielle were more studious than I was. They got the assignments done while on the trip. I honestly thought that homework was all they were going to do while we were away. But that just goes to show you how much we all understand what a hard worker our Val Victorian really is. Becca Brubaker strives to achieve her personal best and accepts nothing less. In addition to her challenging course load, she is also, a dedic she is also dedicated to community service as our school's prayer and worship club vice president. Becca's hard work doesn't stop when the bell rings at the end of the day. She has filled her after school hours with an allied health internship, tutoring at Bagley Elementary, and Sunday school teaching at Victorious Life Church. Although Becca might seem to our class as someone who is only dedicated to her studies, she is a dear friend to many, and as Danielle, a mutual friend of ours, could tell you, Becca is more than just a study buddy. She is someone to go thrift shopping for AP Lit costumes with, and the one with a knack for getting the best beetles out of the container for AP Bio dissection. 
I could go on, but I don't think I could list all the many honors and achievements that are the reason she is standing up here tonight as the valid Victorian for the class of 2014. Becca's drive to succeed will serve her well as she leaves Latrobe to study biology at Geneva College before eventually moving into a career in medicine. Geneva College is lucky to welcome, and I ask all of you to welcome, our valid Victorian, Becca Brubaker. Good evening and welcome. Tonight, join me on a journey back in time till we were young children eager to dive into the swimming pool for the first time. Imagine the hot July sun blazes on our already sunburnt shoulders as we walk across the burning cement to reach the diving board that is three times our height, our hearts beat uncontrollably. One step at a time, we climb the creaky stairs to reach the top. We are ready to dive into the deep end. So, we wobble across the creaky aluminum and gaze into the crystal clear water below. Below the water, we realize there is cement. We fear slamming into the cement and never making it back to the top. But then, we hear our friends screaming, jump, jump. Our palms are sweaty and our minds tell us not to jump, whispering, you are too small to swim in the deep end. But the last thing we want to be is that scaredy cat kid sitting on the edge of the hard cement, too afraid to jump. So we put on our neon green goggles, bend our tiny knees, brace ourselves, and leap into the water below, praying we won't drown. While we may have been praying for survival, our class's championship swimmers, Gina and Kayla, were thinking, I wish this pool was deeper. As we climbed step after blazing hot step to reach the diving board, we imagined what it was going to feel like at the top. As children, it required determination to climb those stairs, but we knew with absolute certainty, in order to reach the top, to achieve the goal of jumping in, we must climb the stairs no matter how high they seemed. The last few years have been like these stairs. As we climbed to this point in our education, there were moments we feared we might fail and fall, just like the child climbing the stairs of the diving board. For Danielle and myself, there were fears of regular AP physics exams every six days, or failing with one of Mrs. Pompeo's ridiculously hard AP calculus tests. For softball and wrestling athletes, it was the fear of losing the championships and embarrassing our school. For others, those fears were of not being recruited for the military, not being hired for a certain job, or failing the NOCDs. But each graduate here tonight continued to climb despite those fears. And now, here we are, standing at the first platform of the diving board the young child would dive from. We can all take a moment and look around. Enjoy the success and perseverance that got you up each scary step. But now, Consider after we learned how to dive from the first platform of the diving board as children, we saw the high dive experience divers dive from. The dive with more stairs to climb, the dive that will require more determination. We desperately want to learn how to dive from this board. Likewise, I am sure there's a diving board with even higher stairs to climb in every single person here's future. Some of us have the stairs to climb to pursue a trade in technical school. Some of us have the stairs of a college education to climb before receiving a degree. And then, once the formal education is complete, we must climb the stairs parenthood brings so that we may raise our children right. So we continue to climb, to learn, to persevere, because the stairs never end. As children, after we finally reached the top, we then walked across the shaky aluminum and gazed into the water. At the end of the board, we saw the cement. We were instantly afraid. The cement had the power to break every bone in our tiny bodies. The cement is what caused the kid, our friends to make fun of, sit on the edge, too afraid to jump in. 
In our lives, the cement that holds us back from following our dreams is another person's opinion. The negative words that people say paralyze us at times, just like the cement at the bottom of the pool. Bobby Har, you're an amazing rapper and have already cut some amateur albums. That's an amazing accomplishment and you should be very proud of yourself. I bet you hear all kinds of negative things from people who know nothing about music. Michelle Cam, I just have to say you're an amazing photographer. I see your photos on Facebook all the time and they are absolutely beautiful, especially the sixth grade camp ones. Don't let people bash your talent. Brittany Boucher, you're an amazing mother. I know people judge you and said you would never make it to this point, but you did. You're graduating today. Enjoy this moment and embrace it fully. Don't listen to the people who say you won't graduate college, because I know you will. Bobby, Michelle, Brittany, and all here, we can use the cement of cruel opinions as motivation. When we encounter the cement, it can help us reach our goals just after diving in. We simply kick the bottom of the pool to propel us to the top of the water, no longer afraid, but empowered. We can do the same right now, and as we continue to climb to the next big jump, we will encounter in future waters. We can take the hardness of others' words and push ourselves forward to achieve our dreams. But here we are tonight, at the top of the diving board, one higher than we first learned to climb, but not yet the highest we will encounter. We are staring down at those thousands of gallons we are no longer afraid of, but curious about, and thinking how the cement at the bottom is no match for our visions of what we want to accomplish before the next, even higher jump years from now. Class of 2014, we must take off our life vests, put on our goggles, and not be afraid to jump. Are you ready to join me on this next journey and take the risk and jump? I think you are, because you are already a class of risk takers. We take chances to follow our dreams. Seth is taking the risk of joining the army to serve our country. Jaden is taking the leap to move across the United States to follow his dream of becoming a successful astrophysicist in his favorite region of the United States. Danielle is leaving her comfort zone to attend a prestigious university. Sarah College is taking the biggest risk of all by being my roommate at Geneva. <laughs> we are about to take all kinds of new chances. Sometimes they will be worth it and sometimes they will be not. But we will be ready to kick off the cement, come up for air, and try again knowing that eventually we will get back to that feeling we had as little kids who jumped into the swimming pool at Legion Keener for the first time, we, where we felt triumphant, accomplished, and ready because we have conquered the deep end. Thank you. Good evening. My name is John Saunders, and as the secretary of the class of 2014, I am honored and humbled to be given this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to speak before all of you, and most importantly, my 2014 classmates, of whom I respect and care for so very much. My duty tonight is to introduce the Greater Latrobe class of 2014 salutatorian. Jaden Johnston is an incredibly successful student who has immersed himself in his academic studies. Jaden has never been afraid of working hard to achieve the highest of goals. Jaden has spent his junior year as vice president of the French National Honor Society. This past year, Jaden served as pre vice president of the National Honor Society as well. He has also been a member of the National Art Honor Society and is a college board AP scholar. Those who know Jaden best will tell you he takes great pride in being helpful and serving his community through multiple leadership positions. Jaden's friends will also tell you that beyond his desires to become an accomplished student, 
He also has the ability to engage others with his sense of humor and willingness to crack a joke now and then. Jaden will attend the University of Arizona Honors College, where he will double major in astronomy and physics, and with a minor in French. He's sure to make a positive impact on the lives of those around him as he moves west to immerse himself again in the hard work necessary to attain his lofty and challenging goals. At this time, it is my distinct honor to present the Greater Latrobe Salutatorian for the class of 2014, Jaden Johnston. Welcome. It's unfortunate that graduation couldn't take place at the new stadium this year. Goal posts, turf paint, high-rise bleachers, and a track along the perimeter would have surrounded us. A stadium graduation is fitting because we often compare our education to a race, a race riddled with hurdles like homework and tests, with the last semester as the final leg and graduation as the finish line. However, this analogy leaves me cringing. For one thing, a race begins when the horn sounds, but an education has no distinct starting time. Learning begins through text and literature when we turn the page, through media players when we hit play, and through the internet when we open a new tab. With technology's ease of access, we can start learning whenever we want and take our time savoring each new tidbit. Another reason that analogy just doesn't work is that during a race, the pack of runners takes off from the same line competing against each other. But in learning, the only runner is ourselves. We run at our own pace, all with different starting lines. In education, there really shouldn't be any comparison to others because what we learn is up to us. The only real competition is within us. And there are no rules or officials telling us how to study or what to learn. It's our decision to pick up that book, actually write that research paper, or cheat off that smart guy sitting to the left. All that really matters is how hard we're willing to run and what decisions will guide the way we go about it. If we think of an education as simply school, we're like in a race, we all start at the same time and run against each other in a single lane toward the same end, then tonight, we may think that after those 12 years of running, we finally reach the finish line. Unlike a race, however, I want all of us to remember that education has no end. There will always be something to learn and to reach for, no matter what our plans are after tonight. So let's get off that racetrack and ditch that metaphor where we stand in a single lane and a horn marks the beginning of a finite journey. There are just too many goals to reach for, and too many questions to answer for us to limit ourselves to this one track. There are far too many courses to take, not just in mathematics and English, but also in life for us to arrive at the same place. Instead of thinking about our time in school like a race, let's leave here tonight imagining that we're on a hike. As we walk, we learn. And as we learn, new trails appear, each one containing both a scenic and direct route. The scenic route will have us explore our new knowledge to our limits, while the direct route will have us merely skim its surface. But what happens if we end up not liking the course we've, cho we've chosen? Simple. We head back to the fork and take another path. The choice to either take the scenic route, the direct route, or head back to the fork each for each path represents our goals in our education. Thank our school for offering a huge selection of courses from computer science to music theory that provides us with new trails to explore or not to explore. When we follow the path we've chosen at the fork, when we get what we want out of our education, we place first. To you, it may appear as though I came in second, but because I followed my own path, I feel like a winner. Education is not a race. There is no competition, lanes, rules, losers, or starting and finish lines. Education is a journey, one that will last a lifetime. And I hope that all of us realizes this, because only then will we come home with a trophy. I'm not talking about a shiny gold trophy either. 
This trophy will be one covered in the branches, dirt, and sweat from our hike. It will reflect our hard work and dedication on and in the courses we have chosen and will choose. Thank you, and enjoy the hike. Ready? Yeah? One of the privileges of being the principal of the high school is you get to present the class to the superintendent, and you get to have the opportunity to say some closing remarks to the students. What you don't know is that I've been beating their ear for the last three or four days and telling them what I wanted them to know. So there's just one small thing, and I promised them that I'd be very short. But before I do my formal responsibilities, there's a few things I need to take care of first. First, I want to thank Mr. Carlos Cardozo, not just for being here and taking his time to address this class, but for all the work that he has done in the Young Engineers program and providing our students opportunities. So if everybody would please join me in thanking him. When you start thanking people, you make a small problem for yourself in that you can't possibly thank everybody. But I think the students would agree with me with this next one. I'd like to take an opportunity to thank Mrs. Rachel Sergi, who not only had to plan one graduation, but had to actually plan two graduations in case the weather turned out nice. She had a plan for outside and plan on inside. So class of 2014, what do you say? Let's thank Ms. Sergi. On a personal note, I'm going to take an opportunity to thank Ken Milslagel and the maintenance crew who had to get the field ready for us, get the platforms built, the stage built for outside, get all the chairs set up, get everything ready so that it can be rained on. <laughs> and then turn around and come in here and get all this set up for us in a moment's notice. So to Ken and his crew, I thank you very much. Now, the rest of my talk goes to the class, so if you'll just bear with me, I need to speak to them. Do you remember back in August I told you how quickly this would go? Well, here we are. I now get the opportunity to give you my closing thoughts. So let's think about it. Where do you think I'm going to go? I'm going to go to right where we started. Remember what I told you the very first day? Take good care of each other. You remember that? That was my message to you. Take good care of each other. And that's my message for you again. Take good care of each other. Treat each other well. Be tolerant. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. I'm going to share a little story with you. Back when I was in college, I was in a philosophy class. And you have to understand, I'm a mathematician. I'm a math teacher. So philosophy was way out there. <clears throat> we go in, professor comes in, has a piece of paper. And on that paper, he grabs his pencil, he puts a little dot on that paper, and he holds it up and he says, what do you see? Well, you got most of the same responses from us freshmen. I see a dot. I see a mark, I see a spot, I see a circle. And he said, anybody see anything else? And no, no, that, that was pretty much it. And he said, isn't that a shame? You had a perfectly good piece of paper and all you saw was the one blemish, the one imperfection on that paper. The rest of it was perfect and you never even saw it. But all you focused on was what was wrong. And that's sometimes what we do with each other. We focus only on our imperfections. We focus only on each other's blemishes. We don't look at all the good things about these other people around us. We only focus on what's wrong. We focus on the blemish. We focus on the imperfection. 
Think of what a wonderful world it would be if we would just take good care of each other. If we would just stop looking at the things that are wrong with the person next to us and accept their differences. They are as imperfect as we are. And if we could just accept them for what they are and for who they are, we would all be much better off. So that's my message to you once again. Please, please take good care of each other. Treat each other well. You deserve it. And now, Mrs. Swaggart, it is my pleasure, it is my honor to present to you the graduating class of 2014. Good evening. Sorry. As the superintendent of schools, it is an honor to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2014. I would like to thank our school board president, Susan Maines, and vice president, Catherine Elder, who are seated on the stage this evening. In addition, I would also like to recognize and thank our additional school board members, William Palmer, Eric Hauser, Heidi Kozar, William Moeller, Merle Music, Dr. Michael Zorch, and Dr. Rhonda Lachland for their continued work supporting the mission and vision of the Greater Latrobe School District. Thank you to all of the parents, relatives, and friends here this evening in support of all of our graduates. All of these students have met the requirements to receive a Greater Latrobe High School Diploma and should be congratulated for this honor. Mr. Steve Lacasio and the high school administrative staff work tirelessly to support our students and I know how proud they are of tonight's graduates. This evening is very special to each and every graduate and represents an ending to a period in each of their lives. The graduates probably feel you will never have an opportunity to experience again the excitement of this evening. The nice thing about endings, however, is that there will be a beginning for all of you, our graduates. Whether that be in the workforce, military, or higher education, it represents the start of another significant stepping stone. A few weeks ago, a friend asked me what I was going to speak about at graduation. I replied that I didn't know, and I asked if she remembered who spoke, what was said, or how she felt at her high school graduation. She did not. At that point, I started to think of my own graduation many years ago, and unfortunately, the only thing I can remember is that we processed outside, and in 10 minutes, there was a pounding rain, and we all ran inside, and proceeded to graduate without wearing our graduation gowns. However, I can tell you that I know that I felt certain that evening that at that point in time, I would never forget that time of my life. At this point, I am sure that each of you, the graduates, believes that you will always remember how you feel right now. Relieved, exhausted, elated, bored, that you will always remember who you are sitting next to. Hopefully you know who that person is. That you will always remember your class rank or how you felt getting ready to come here this evening. I and most of the other high school graduates here this evening can probably tell you, tell each of you that you do forget those things that at this point seem timeless and never to be forgotten are forgotten. Therefore, I have one final assignment for each and every graduate here. During the next couple of weeks, after the graduation parties are over, summer activities are in full swing, take your phone or some device, jot down significant facts, feelings, observations, and of course, photographs, and, excuse me, about graduation. Not only the ceremony here this evening, but also the few weeks before and the few weeks after. Discuss how you felt when you accepted the diploma tonight. Think about who your best friend is in your class and why. Ponder 
who your favorite and second favorite teacher is from K to 12, and jot down why they were your favorite teacher. List who was present at your graduation from your family and who seemed the most excited for you and why. Talk about what graduation, graduation cards, your yearbook, and your diploma. At your 15th, 20th, 50th anniversary or class reunion, you will bring out those cards on occasion and memorabilia. As your life progresses and other endings naturally occur and beginnings naturally happen, I can tell you that those notes you made about your graduation will be the most significant thing to you about this graduation. Don't let the opportunity pass you by. Choose to remember your years at Greater Latrobe Senior High School. They are memories to treasure. Don't worry, if you don't do the assignment, you still receive your high school diploma this evening. I do appreciate all of you and thank you for coming this evening and good luck in your life's pursuits. Now, excuse me, now for the words tonight's graduates have been waiting to hear. As the superintendent of schools of the Greater Latrobe School District and a commissioned officer for public education in the state of Pennsylvania, I attest that each member of the class of 2014 present this evening has completed an approved program of studies and has met all the requirements established by the Pennsylvania State Board of Education and the Greater Latrobe School District. Therefore, at this time, I confer upon those members of the class of 2014 a Greater Latrobe Senior High School Diploma and the status of graduate of the Greater Latrobe School District. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you hold your applause until all graduates are recognized. Are you ready? Go for it. Jarrett Frederick Patterson, class president. Adam Edward Martin, class vice president. John Richard Saunders, class secretary. Emily Kirsten Eckerd, class treasurer. Rebecca Renee Brubaker, valedictorian. Jaden Thomas Johnson, salutatorian. Alexis R. Ackerman, Nicholas F. Allen. Kenneth A. Allen III. Cassandra Ann Ambrose. Kevin D. Augustine. Elizabeth N. Baldwin. Jacob Neal Ballard. Seth Thomas Barbro, top 5%. Josh Basenbach. Kurt Allen Bachman. Jacob M. Baum. Rachel Nicole Bauman. Christian Edward Beam. Robert Frederick Beeman, Jr. Nicholas Anthony Beers. Brooke Ann Belcher. Jennifer Rose Bell. Jacob Ross Bentley. Caitlin Alexandria Berate. 
Rachel Paige Berger. Dylan Michael Berry. Emily J. Biddle. Brianna Lynn Behan. Brianna Marie Bisline. Carolina Black. Nicholas D. Blake. Justin R. Bohan. Matthew Richard Bowes. Robert Connor Boyle. Emily Giovanna Bazelli. Tyler Bradley. Brandon Brown. Brittany Rianne Boucher. Adam D. Calabrese. Austin Anthony Camerote. Drew Nicholas Camerote. Richard Allen Campbell. Logan P. Carnes. Nathan Anthony Carrada. Sam K. Wood. Danielle Nicole Charbonneau, top 5%. Dylan Robert Christoph. Daniel Bruce Clark. Mackenzie M. Clark. Andrew E. Clemens. Rebecca Nicole Cliff. Joshua C. Klein. Sarah M. College. Susanna Marie Cope. Andrew R. Kramer. Andrea Dawn Cronin. Abigail Ruth Cunningham. Emily Joe Daly. Camlin Marie Davis. Courtney Aaron Dean. Gina Marie DeFrancesco, top 5%. Alexander Robert Deglow. Taylor Jaronmark Delancey. Noah Vincent DeLuca. Caleb D. Dupree. Ashley Lynn DeWalt. Alyssa Renee Dowden. Alex Jeffrey Drystadt. Jessica Nicole Dahl. Paul Michael Dumnich Jr. Taylee Ray Dunaway.
Lindsay Marie Ellenberger. Nicholas Robert Eller. Brandon N. Ingle. Kelsey Nicole Etling. Hunter James Evangelista. Jocelyn Marie Faribault. Erica Fazzini. Kristen Fennell. Adam Dent Ferguson. Lindsay M. Ferguson. Gino J. Ferraro Jr. Alicia Ann Farenberg. Charlie Amber Farenberg. Elizabeth Ann Page Finley. Aaron Joseph Fish. Lane M. Fisher. Asa W. Ford. Alexander Scott Foster. Bradley Allen Fritz. Stephanie M. Fritz. Crystal Jean Fry. Mark E. Garris, Jr. Amber Nicole Gates. Kaylee M. Gessler. Kevin Anthony Gibson. Robert William Goodfellow, Jr. Colton Nicholas Govey. Anna Jean Graziano. Thomas Jeffrey Green, top 5%. Austin Cole Gribben. Anthony Mark Gadera, top 5%. Abby Lynn Gunderson. Robert James Gunther. Sarah Marie Hennel. Tara Lee Haynes. Dylan Thomas Hall. Matthew. Charles Edward Har Jr. Aaron James Harris. Zane M. Harshall. Dakota Paul Hartley. Jason Conley Hauser. 
Larissa Ann Hauser. Andrew Michael Hellman. Nathan A. Hill. Kathleen Elizabeth Hillenbrecht. Tyler Himmler. Alexander Jacob Hoops. Wyatt Presley James Hall. Alex Nicholas Jabor, top 5%. Emily Kate Jackson. Michelle N. Jacobs. John Andrew Jankowski. Christopher James Johnson. Lauren Elizabeth Johnson. Isaiah K. Jones. John Thomas Jupina. Michelle Cam, top 5%. Ashley Marie Keith. Joshua Anthony Keith. Alexandra Marie Keegan. Erica Rose Kellerman. That's my sister. <laughs> Sarah Jacqueline Kemmerer. <laughs> Hannah Judith Kiesel. Tara Jade Kiefer. <coughs> Jocelyn Ray Kimple. Sean Patrick Kissel. Connor Allen Coke. Garrett James Kolar. Jonathan Richard Colling. Kelsey Lynn Commissack, top 5%. Dylan Austin Kovach. Renee Crawl. Nicole Taylor Cussey. Alicia Renee Kuszajewski. Samantha Marie Coachella. Allison Marie LaDuke, top 5%. Brandon Paul Larkin. Benjamin Merrick Laro. Cody William Lawrence. Krista Sue Lawrence. Tyler Alexander Lawrence. Alec Gregory Layton. Seth Tyler Leeper. Hillary Jane Leopold. Castle A. Leonard, top 
Sierra or Leonard. Matthew Isaac Lesko. <laughs> Raymond Thomas LeVay Jr. Jerome Anthony Little. Angelica Dawn Long Stewart. David Paul Lochner. Carly Joanne Lubick. Patrick John Lucchino, a top 5%. Katie Lauren Mahoney. Alora Ann Manning. Olivia J. Marcanio. <laughs> Kane Miles Markle. Woo! Barrick Nevin Marshall. <laughs> Deborah A. Martin. Kyle Joseph Mattioli. Sarah G. McCampbell. Eric Douglas McCracken, top 5%. Jordan Robert McCrady. Karan Nilesh Mehta. Cody James Mickinac. Sarah Annette Mickinac. Jeffrey Michael Miller. Michael Scott Miller. Riley Joseph Miller. Jenna S. Mucci. Miranda Nicole Myers. Colleen Elizabeth Nager. Christopher D. Nichols, Jr. Sydney Nix. Casey Alexandria Knoll. Shelby Marie Knoll. Rachel Ann Nolan. Clarissa May North. Joshua Michael Nunez. Donald Riley O'Neill. Devin Joseph Honorado. Kayla Veronica Owens. Dylan Nikhil Powell. Christopher J. Paluzzi. Ariana Marie Palmer. Yeah. Kenneth Richard Paredes. Abigail Nicole Passero. James Dylan Passero. Adam Paul Palowski. Nikayla M. Payne. Andrea Lynn Petter. 
Michaela Pilar. Ashley Nicole Perillo. Patrick J. Perry. John T. Pinsky. Haley Ann Plows. Caitlin Marie Plummer. Emily Page Porter. Alexander E. Powell. Stephen Pritz. Matthew D. Proch. Jacob Paul Pulio. Allison Nicole Pinus. Sydney Eleanor Raymond. Rachel M. Reed. Corbin Andrew Repko. Patrick J. Repko. Jose Miguel Martin Mape Reyes. Nicholas Robel. Sarah Angle Rosenbaum. Nicholas G. Roski. Emily Rose Samella. Kelly Sanner. Colin A. Sarnice. Zachary R. Sarnice. Adam Francesco Sarp. Dominic V. Scalise. Samantha M. Shaw. Char Lee Shellich. Catherine A. Schmucker. Nicholas David Shulo. PJ Self. Logan Michael Simniski, top 5%. Matthew J. Seremit. Marina Megid Shenuda. Justin Tyler Short. John M. Showalter III. Jordan M. Shum. Daniel Jacob Psycho. Emma Silvis. Michael Scott Cesac Jr. Katie K. Slivko. Marcus Hunter Smale. Lindsay Elizabeth Smetanka. Megan Jean Smetanka. Ben Jewett Smith. 
Joshua Christopher Smith. Morgan Renee Smith. Stephanie Michelle Smith. Megan D. Smolik. Rhett L. Snyder. Lauren Nicole Solomon. Zach Andrew Spangler. Jesse G. Svon. Cody Robert Stahl. Catherine L. Stallings. Tristan Michael Stape. Yeah. <laughs> Nevin T. Stass. <laughs> Olivia Grace Stass. <laughs> Jessica E. Stein. <laughs> Kayla Marie Stemmler. Tyler Scott Sturcho. Nicholas J. Stewart. Shannon Ray Stopa. Reagan Elizabeth Stubbs. Alex Stumpf. Alexa Ann Stinchula. Nicole Riley Sullivan. Mayu Suzuki. Mayu! Selena Christine Sweeney. Lauren Alyssa Takich, top 5%. Nicholas Michael Tavella. <laughs> Michaela C. Thompson. Drew David Tonks. Caitlin Bailey Truxel. Yeah, Molly Elizabeth Ulishny. Yeah, Brett Joseph Valerani. Go, Benjamin Stephen Vavik. Alexa Marie Veneri. Nathan Patrick Verchuk. Morgan Rose Wayno. Devin Joy Watt. Caleb Christian Whitehead. Ryan James Wilhelm. Yeah! Maddie Elizabeth Wilson. Erin Marie Wilt, top 5%. Nathan S. Weinbrenner. Samantha Wolf. Shayna Wolf. Woo! Emma Caitlin Womack, top 5%. Yeah! Joseph William Wright. Yeah, Jessica Ann Yasher. 
Molly Christine Yesho. Maria Elizabeth Yakapenik. Shelby Lynn Young. Megan Lynn Yonker. Zachary John Zavatsky. Lexi Lauren Zapetti. Andrew J. Zundel. Hiram L. Naranzio. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, community of Greater Lake Trobe, teachers, administrators, and staff, Greater Lake Trobe Board of Directors, and Superintendent of Schools, I present to you the Greater Lake Trobe graduating class of 2014. <laughs> At this time, please stand for the singing of the alma mater by Savannah McElhaney. Oh, dear Lee Trope High School to you, we pledge to be loyal and true, and while we're at work or at Sons and thy daughters from far and from near will love thee forever. Thy name will revere to the skies on high. Dear old Latrobe High, we'll sing loud thy praises, thy honor proclaim. Dear old Latrobe High. Just to start off, I'd like to say that if I don't get an applause like that at the end of my introduction, I understand. That's kind of a once in a lifetime thing. But, okay. My name is Adam Martin. I'm the Vice President of the Class of 2014. And I'm also here to introduce our President and my friend, Jared Patterson. Jared has been on student council since sixth grade, our class president and a member of the German National Honor Society since 10th, and also a member of the National Honor Society. On top of all of this, he has been a model student academically. Perhaps his most important accomplishment, however, is having the privilege of telling people that he is my friend. <laughs> this goes the whole way back to the Mountain View Elementary School goal program in fourth grade. But we've really become close friends in our years at the senior high school. Whether it has been struggling through AP German, making a diagram of the moon landing with Pete Marshmallows for history class, being in the same prom group, or being class officers and on student council together for the last two years, Jared and I have done a lot of fun things together. So please keep all that in mind, but as Jared's friend, I feel the need to pick on him tonight, especially because I'm fairly certain I won't get another chance to do so in front of this many people. <laughs> now, a natural way of going about this would be to talk about sports. As a big hockey fan, so we both are, the brutal winter of this year presented a perfect opportunity for us to try out some ice hockey on the Wimmerton Pond. At the start of the winter, Jared and I were both pretty inexperienced, but I managed to figure out ice skating to some extent fairly quickly. Jared, on the other hand, got frustrated and stumbled his way off the ice to exchange his skates for a pair of boots. And as you can likely imagine, that didn't work out so great either. Now, if any of you expected this to be the turning point in my speech and some type of cliched hard work pays off in the end graduation speech, then you're sadly mistaken. 
because a few minutes after the failed attempt at playing in boots, Jarrett's not-so-promising hockey career was already at an end. Now, one thing that he can play, however, is backyard football, or at least, that's, at least that's what he would tell you. And sure, he's a decent quarterback at times, but he still couldn't manage to win two weeks ago when he played against a team quarterback by yours truly. Now, on the bright side, at least he managed to play this sport for more than 15 minutes without giving up, so there's something to be proud of, I guess. And I could tell plenty more stories about me beating Jared in something, but I should probably stop at this point, because I don't want to make him sad or embarrass him too badly before his big, important end of graduation speech. On a more complimentary note than my other stories, next year Jared will begin his pursuit of a nuclear engineering degree at Penn State University on an NROTC scholarship. So he might think that he finally has me beat, but again, he's wrong. You see, next year I will be going to THE Ohio State University, so Jarrett, I still win. <laughs> so even though I could keep stacking up my wins all night, and even though I'd really love to have the last word in all this, unfortunately for everyone in attendance here tonight, including myself, it's his turn to speak. So now, without further compliments or insults, here's my close friend and Class of 2014 President, Jared Patterson. I expected nothing less. There we go. Okay. Good evening, distinguished guests, parents, family, and friends the commencement ceremony for the Greater Latrobe Class 2014. On behalf of all my fellow classmates, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight as we embark on this significant transition in our lives. I also want to take a moment and thank all of my classmates for electing me as their class president and allowing me to fill this role for the past three years. I'm really grateful for be being given the opportunity to represent you. During the junior year, class officers get together to discuss items like our class motto, colors, flower, and flag. To be honest, we had some disagreements among us about some of these items, but never over our chosen class motto. Our class motto is one that I believe outlines a good philosophy about the choices we make as we take the next step in our lives. Let's face it, up until this point we have been given a lot of help along the way. Of course I'm not saying that we'll never be given help after graduation, but we all will have to take more control and play a more active role in achieving our goals. I told myself several times throughout the school year when thinking about this graduation speech, that I would stay away from some of the typical topics such as follow your dreams, we are the future, or the future is in our hands. They're heard in so many graduation speeches. However, many of these themes are actually true and there's a reason that they're included in so many speeches. So after considering the message of our class motto, I decided that I would like to talk about making choices, taking chances, and working to achieve your destiny. In the words of William Jennings Bryan, our class motto reads, destiny is no matter of chance, it is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for, it is a thing to be achieved. Destiny is often defined as a state we'll arrive in with no effort on our part. However, I believe that each of us has to be willing, willing to actively shape our own destiny. Sure, you can just sit back and wait for success to fall in your lap, but nine times out of ten, it doesn't work that way. You must energetically and proactively pursue it. For instance, maybe you've decided to follow the path of an apprentice in a particular trade, and you're hoping to become a master. You can't make the minimal effort and just show up every day and expect that one day you will suddenly be entitled to be calling yourself a master of your craft. Instead, you need to practice, study, and take every opportunity made available to you to learn, improve, and perfect your skills. That would include observing the true masters of your trades to learn all that they have to offer. You have to make choices each day motivated by the desire to achieve your destiny, and if you do, it won't be a matter of fate, but a matter of choice, a destiny that you shaped. Some of you are headed off to college, like me, with every expectation that you're going to be a doctor or an engineer someday. During the first year or two, we will take a lot of classes meeting the general education requirements, and everything will go really well. But pretty soon, it will be crunch time. Our schedules will be consumed with major specific classes, and we will find that we have to work really hard just to keep up in all of the challenge, challenging advanced level classes. At this point, you and I will have a choice to make. Either continue on our chosen path because we are determined to achieve our destinies, or reevaluate and take a turn on a slightly different path. Either way, we won't be able to just wait for the work to get easier or for the path to present itself. We will need to make a choice and take action. I take our motto to heart tonight as I am in the middle of taking chances, making choices, and actively pursuing my future path. I want to be an officer in the United States Navy. 
Last fall, I applied and was selected for a full academic scholarship by the Navy ROTC. And in January, I received the notification that I had been awarded the scholarship. And still today, I'm uncertain of the outcome because of a medical waiver that I'm still pursuing. I have not given up, and I still believe that I'll be able to achieve my goal to be an engineering student at Penn State and a U.S. Navy midshipman and Navy ROTC at the end of the summer. The only way I'll get to achieve my goal of being an officer in the United States Navy is by making good choices and by doing everything I can day in and day out to get there. Some of you, my classmates and fellow graduates, have also already begun working toward your chosen path, your destiny, having secured licensing for and a position in your chosen field. Or maybe you're already receiving on-the-job training. You're already making choices and pursuing your destiny in career paths such as allied health, culinary arts, and computer engineering technology, to name a few. You need to continue to make choices and work toward achieving your goals. Now that we're almost high school graduates, not only do we have the ability to make these big decisions, we have the responsibility to make them, those that will determine our success. And if we accept this responsibility and work toward achieving our goals, it won't be a matter of chance, it'll be a matter of choice. But before we take up that responsibility and begin making the important decisions that will shape our futures, I think it's important for us to recognize those many helping hands that have gotten us to this moment. I don't know if everyone has been properly thanked or if this humble thank you will suffice, but let's try. First, let's thank our parents. They have comforted us, given us shelter, packed our lunches in elementary school, driven us everywhere, instilled discipline, and given a full measure of love and support. Without them, we would not be here tonight. Mom and Dad, thank you. We also need to thank our educators, those who have guided us in learning all that we need to know to be prepared to graduate today. They have inspired us as musicians, athletes, scholars, volunteers, and leaders. These will be the people that we remember when we look back on our days here. Year after year, I see former students returning to the high school on college break. These graduates come back to visit those individuals who made a difference in their lives. I know many of us will want to do the same. We also need to thank people like Mr. Carlos Cardoso and other leaders in our community who run successful businesses and in doing so create employment opportunities and help to grow our community. Many of our graduates tonight have already benefited from the opportunities that these business leaders made available. We want to thank all of you in the community for the roles that you have played in our future. Finally, I suspect that I'm not alone being really excited right now. All of our books have been turned in, our yearbooks have been signed, and here we are in our caps and gowns ready to graduate from high school. In just a few moments, these years we have spent together here as the class of 2014 at Great of the Trobe will come to an end, leaving us with the friendships and memories that we will carry with us. Tomorrow when we awake, we will already have begun making choices, taking chances, and heading down the next path in our lives. I thank you and wish everyone all of the best in the future, and hope you remember that destiny is, something, is not something to be waited for, it is something to be achieved. Thank you and God bless. At this time, will the class of 2014 please stand? Join me as we turn our tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations, class of 2014.